talked a lot about different kinds of theories. I want to take the time now to go and put the theories into action. What exactly is involved with doing things? Probably the best thing to do is take your theories and start working on the aspect of motivating employees on the actual work itself. Job enrichment is probably one of the most powerful things you can possibly do. It's really based upon Hertzberg motivators, such as responsibility, achievement, and recognition. So we're looking at those as the motivators in lieu of the hygiene factors. Hopefully you're addressing that and making certain you're consistent as to the hygiene factors and you're addressing them to reduce unsatisfaction. You're gonna focus now on the true motivators. A lot of the different things is, is give the employees a skill variety. If they're weak in an area, let's say they have a job description and there's 30 different duties in it. Most of us really focus in on the top five duties on a regular basis and then the rest of them we seldom do. Maybe you sit down and have them focus on the rest of those. Maybe you want to sit down and take an account and move them over to marketing to let them experience what it's like to be marketing for three months and then switch roles. That seems to work really well because when you come back to the roles, you appreciate other people and you, and you start breaking down those different silos of, of different things. We're marketing. We're better than you guys in accounting. Accounting. We really watch the money. You guys are just crazy people that sell stuff. Okay. You, if you want to break down the silos, you may want to sit there and do some shifting like that in the process. Task identity, make certain that they understand what's going on at the work. And there's other parts of the task as well and the significance of each task. Sometimes you wanna give them autonomy, feedback on a regular basis. These five things are really big things about job enrichment that people really appreciate. Sometimes you enrich it by enlarging the job as well. One time when I was a, a principal, once upon a time, I used to get jobs in the summertime and a lot of them I would work just because out of interest. I was on a production line one time and we sat down there, we worked the afternoon shift, which is, oh my gosh, it is three o'clock to 11 o'clock at night, one of the worst shifts humanly possible, I think. So, so I'm sitting there working on the shift and we had a, an assembly line going down where we were injecting molds with polyurethane foam. And you sit down there and you push the button on the machine. Ch Whoa, I forgot about it because your mind is totally numb from pushing four buttons, injecting foam into mold as you go through in the process. So, so we decided as a group, the supervisor didn't know, we all changed jobs. And we liked doing it. There were five of us. And we shifted jobs. So every time we had a break, every week, we changed a job. And the supervisor came by, our productivity increased. We enlarged the job, we rotated positions, and we became the most efficient line we had in the entire plant. That's on job rotation, job enlargement, all those things really work to help motivate the employee. And a lot of times break up the monotony and improve the overall quality. So it really is a lot of times, you'll see some of the world's finest cars, they're not made on production lines, they're made with a group of workers. Lamborghini started doing it when they would have a whole team of people sit down, 12 employees would work around a car in the middle and they would all do different parts, assemble the car. It was truly a handmade car in the process. They charged a massive price, but the quality was all there because each one took a massive amount of pride in the end product by the time it was all done. Job enrichment, it really is a hallmark of some of the different aspects of working uh, and, and efficiency and quality production by the time you're all done. It's a couple of things on flexibility. A lot of employees sit there think that they can be productive and efficient as much outside the office as they are inside the office. Since we have the experience of COVID, that's going to be more and more a, a, a challenge in the workplace of, of us moving a lot of times into what we call hybrid workplace, where people are coming into work two or three days a week and staying home two to three days a week and working on, on similar tasks at home in the process. So you'll see see that in the process, if you look on the center number, almost two thirds of the people would take a lower paying job if their job had more flexibility in it. So, so keep this in mind as a leader as to how you structure your workplace as you go through. Communication is also a major part of motivation. Create a culture that rewards listening. A lot of managers simply don't listen. They're so focused on getting the task off their desk to sit down to the next person that they forget about listening as to how things can be done more efficiently. We need to be training leaders to listen to the people that they work with. And it could be customers, it could be employees, whatever. We need to sit down and do that. We have, need to have effective questioning techniques. Make certain when you ask a question that is open-ended instead of a yes or no. Remove barriers. 
I typically would sit down and even I would sit down uh, going from my office down the hallway and every once in a while I just plop myself down on somebody two or three levels below me in the management structure and say, how are things doing? Is there anything I can do to sit down and help things to make your job easier? You'd be surprised at how often you would get just a casual thing that seemed like nothing to them, but you change it and all of a sudden you see productivity or efficiency increase in the service that's being delivered. And find ways to sit down and let employees talk to you. Your new manager, employees think your predecessor didn't care for them. You don't want that same reputation, but you want to make certain that you sit down and talk to people and find ways to reward them. And you can have a formal program to nominate. Be creative in the process. Listen to complaints about past. Don't always make a change. Wait a while before you make a change, but always sit down and focus in on what you can really do. This is a big thing, recognize a job well done. As I mentioned previously, everybody is motivated differently. Some people like intrinsic rewards versus extrinsic rewards, so internal or external. Sometimes they like to have more challenging work instead of a trophy or a plaque. Sometimes you would sit down and want to have a plaque or a round of applause, paid time off. Give them a prime parking spot for employee of the year if they really are an employee of the year. More vacation days, different kind of schedules. Give them stock options in the process. Either way, job enrichment is a huge part of motivation in the workplace. Providing flexibility as well as good, clear communication really helps us to sit down putting theory into the actual field of work. Take care.